Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? So, as we are going back to playing other games on a regular basis, I have decided that I would like to do Factorio once a week. Um, the, the Factorio video that I did, there was a lot of people wanted to see a bit more of this, and I really enjoy playing this game. So, I'm not going to start a new one. Several people said they'd like me to start a new one, but with like all these settings that I got going on here. I don't want to do that. Um, that, I feel, is going to be a bit too much. It's going to take far too long to improve anything, uh, to sort of get back to this point. So I'm just going to take it on from here. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Factorio, there are lots of videos out there that show how to start off in the world. I did a series a long time ago that shows how to start off in the world. So that bit you can see. You can see it all being done. Um, this particular world, I've got it on peaceful, so no enemies will attack unless I attack them first. I've also got um, lots of extra resources um, for each of the, the resource nodes. And if we just come down here, I will quickly show you what I mean. You look here, it's 2,700, 3,000 stone in each of those areas. And the coal over in this one, there's even more in that one. Yeah, see, four, five... Um, so there's loads of resources there available that you can use. Um, just come through there. So yeah, and I've also got all of the recipes very, very expensive. For those of you who've seen the last episode, I'm just repeating what I said last time. Um, so if we take a quick look in here, uh, two iron plate, ten copper cable. For anyone who's familiar with um, Factorio, you will now know just how much more expensive it is. Uh, the iron gear wheel is four iron plates instead of just one. So, yeah, it's very, very expensive. Everything is expensive. It's difficult to um, to get through. It's um, I designed it like this because I didn't want it to be really, really easy with the super high settings. And also, uh, research. Research prices. If you have a look here, they cost a fortune. 3,000 of each of these for level six mining um, productivity. Uh, 2,500 here. I've done a lot of research. The nuclear fuel reprocessing, I will reprocessing, I will be doing that soon. 7,500 each of each of those. So that gives you an idea of just how much it's going to cost to do anything. Um, there won't be a weekly question or anything like that with these games. Um, I'm just going to keep playing. And what I've got at the moment, we see my massive great big swarm here. I have changed and updated the um, furnace system since you've seen it last. I think I was working on part of it. So I've done a big change and a big update on it. Uh, we've got a line of furnaces. And basically what I've done for this one is um, I've got a furnace. And then each furnace should have, if I can, um, I've, I've got... Um, like speed boosts available on my character so it really makes me go a lot faster um, the furnaces should each be affected by three of these actually no there's four of those one two three and four so they've got a boost of eight of these on each of them I will be upgrading everything later on so that it's level three productivity modules rather than level one which would make it even more efficient everything will be working that much better I generally play quite zoomed out like this because if you're in like this, um, everything does get very blurry. You can't see what's going on at all. The key to this is a completely beltless system. That's what I'm trying to go for. Other than out where the trains are collecting ore, um, it's beltless. Um, robots do everything for me. So I've got robo ports everywhere. I've covered this area here in miners and... They've just got chests there, they put everything into a chest. The robots come out, they gather up the items, and they rush them off back to the start. I've expanded, I've got a little bit of a train track going up there. Now, what I was working on last time was, uh, what I've been, well, what I've been working on lately is improving this whole train system. I've cleared everything out from under here. I had a big patch of copper ore here, that's all now gone. And... I've been playing around with the trains. What I wanted to do was I wanted to have two trains on the track. If I just press the map a minute, I got two trains that run on this track going out here. And the trains, they go out and they go round that way. They come up, they stop here, they load from both of these ore fields here and here. And then they come back down this way and they go through here up and they go to their station, which is the top one. And 
Now I've got two trains running that circuit, and then I've got another train that runs this circuit here. It comes down and it goes onto a shared bit of track down here, and then it goes off into its own one here, and then it comes back up and it shares this track up, and then it separates off onto this station. I spent ages playing around with that, trying to get it so that the trains wouldn't keep locking themselves up. And they did keep locking themselves up frequently, um, getting all tangled up here. I've managed to do it. Um, I've got chain signals, I've got rail signals, and to be absolutely honest with you, I don't actually know what signal I put in what place to actually make this whole system work. I've got no idea. I genuinely don't know which one is the one that has made it all work and which one is not really making any difference to it. So, for the future, I will just be doing a one-way system. It's a lot easier to make a one-way system. You just put two tracks out all the way to wherever you want to go, and then you can have as many trains as you like running on it. It's not going to make any difference. So, at the moment, I've kind of got that working as I want it to. That's, that's okay as it is at the moment. So, what I do is I just basically I go through and I decide what are we running low on, what do I need to kind of work on. Um, if you take a look at the power situation right here, we are producing 1.3 gigawatts of energy, and at the moment all the energy needs are satisfied. I have got a massive reactor station down here, and you've got to look on the map very carefully to make sure that no trains are coming so that you can cross the track safely. That's the one thing that will kill you on whatever setting you got it on. Um, a train driving into is never going to be a good thing. It's, it doesn't really matter how you look at it, it's not going to be a good thing. So I've got all of these reactors going here. I've got all of these extra bits coming off of them. This is my main reactor setup, and at the moment, I'm not exactly sure just how much potential this system has got. I don't know, because um, you can sort of see how well it's running there. The only th sort of indication that you can get is if you look on the boilers, those are all running with, like, there's no steam in them. I mean, these pipes are full. I, I never really quite know if they should be full of steam or if they should be empty. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm always, like, slightly confused on that one. But if you look here on each of these, these are all running about the same. Performance, you've got 195, 196 on the steam. And if I... Ooh, careful, I don't want to run across the track. You've got to be really careful. You come all the way up through here right to the very end. And you can see performance is almost maxed out. It's almost right at the top, which means that I am starting to get close to the maximum amount of um, energy that I will be able to get from this setup. So I'm going to have to expand it. Um, the biggest problem I'm going to have with that is finding the water to expand it too. So I, I'm not going to worry about that at the moment, because at the moment we're still okay for fuel. I've just got to make sure I can cross the track. Yes, I can. Um, so that bit's okay. Um, as a rule, I do generally put concrete down. Now, all, one of the other things that I've been doing is... Now, I'm, I'm aware that I did kind of talk about this a little bit in my last... Uh, last time I did an episode on this, but this is kind of a recap. And I'm now going to be carrying on from here every week. This is going to be a one episode per week. Probably we will stick with a Thursday. Over Thursday will be Factorio Day. Um, I was wanting Friday fact... Uh, you know... Friday Factorio. I thought it'd be really good, but um, but we can't do that because I have the questions and answers video on Friday, so we'll do Thursday Factorio instead. All of these are blueprints. I make blueprints for everything so that my robots do the building rather than me. I make my I make the blueprint. That's the bit that I do. That's kind of my input to it. But then after that, I let the the robots will carry on and they will do everything. I've got several here that I'm using at the moment. That's one that I was playing around with, which I no longer need. Um, you've got red circuit there, I've got green circuits which is kind of a big, uh, a, a bigger setup that is working better than my original setup that I had. There's an even bigger one, that has got um, speed modules built into it as well, plus level 3 productivity modules, and I will get to the productivity modules, but right now we're going to put some concrete down. Um, I'd like to, I like to keep concrete everywhere on my base, and we'll go up and we'll have a look at a few other bits and pieces in a minute, but right now... Um, we're going to start dropping a little bit of concrete and actually you know what we've got concrete up here so if I just run up through this bit and I start dropping some concrete down here there we go and I've, I'm carrying a little bit of concrete on me as well so my own robots are going to go rushing off and do a little bit of concrete um, placing 
and I'll probably have that refilled soon but for the most part we don't need to worry about it um, when I originally built my base I had all kinds of bits and pieces for the base all over the place and I kind of started in this area here I had a lot more water here I've covered all that over that's all been filled in and my actual original base the only bit that is left from the original setup is this here I've got a few bits and pieces left over from my first oil setup which is still running so I thought well I'll leave that one go because it's is not actually hurting anything at all so at the moment I want to start working on not only am I going to do concrete, I, I always, every now and then, I'll drop out a little bit more concrete just to keep things going. If we take a look at our um, robo ports here, we can see at the moment that we have roughly, if you look on over the side, it's, it's over here on this side of the map. Um, I know it's difficult to see where my cursor is with all the robots flying around, and this series is definitely not for everybody. Some people just can't cope with looking at these robots going everywhere. It really can screw with your eyes. And so I apologize for those people, but I've, having a beltless factory with tens of thousands of robots has been a dream of mine since I started playing Factorio, and now I am realizing that dream. So at the moment, if you look at the logistics section on the right-hand side, um, it says Robo Port, and it, actually it names every single Robo Port has its own name. So we got Jack Stanbridge, we got Hjorvia, uh, Veliox. So we got we got three thousand logistics robots um, available. Those are the ones that are available. So that means that there are seven thousand logistics robots currently flying around on this map, and you can only see a small percentage of them. You can't zoom out any further than this. Most of them are feeding the furnace system over there. That furnace system is a hungry, hungry beast. Um, but not all of them. Some of them are here feeding this system as well. This system here to make the green circuits, this is another hungry, hungry beast. This, this does really use up a lot of resources. And I'm hoping that sometime in the future there will be something that you can click on to show you how much you own of everything but at the moment all you can do is mouse over an empty chest and it will show you what's in the logistics system so if you look we've got I know what each of those symbols means um, like that square block there is um, rocket fuel I think it's a uh, solid fuel sorry um, but yeah it's fuel so I've got loads of fuel being made I'm not worried about making too much um, I've got no concerns about it so we got rocket we got solid fuel 153,000 123,000 of iron ore and if you look across the top, you can see that we've got coal, that's um, nuclear, uh, uranium, sorry, I think that's uranium there. Um, and we've got steel, uh, there's coal, steel, and then copper ore. And the next line, it's plastic, and one of the uranium products, stone, uh, iron plates. Iron plates are very, very important. And then the next one is the advanced processing units. Those are very important as well. It's those there, the, oh, the advanced circuits, sorry, not processing. It's advanced circuits, and that's a processing unit. Um, what I want is I want a surplus of electronic circuits, a surplus of those, and a surplus of those. And at the moment, we don't have that. Um, we have a lack of green circuits. I can't see green circuits on there at all. We do have a surplus of the processing units near the bottom, 1.5k. So we've got plenty of those. So I need more green circuits. So what I do is I come over to my green circuit production area and we need to take a look here. Why is this slow? At the moment, it, copper cable is the bit that's kind of going slow on there. So why aren't we getting very much copper cable? And then if you have a look, the main reason we're not getting copper cable is because it's not being brought over fast enough. Now I have a request of 500 copper plates going in there. So it's not that. I've got plenty going in. And if you, if you mouse over, I've got a delivery request at the moment. There's 84 copper uh, plates on their way over to that one chest. So not all 500 that we need, but there's enough to sort of... It should be enough to keep it going. It should be enough to keep it running. It's still not enough, though. We still, we're going to need more. So either we need faster robots or we need something else to kind of improve the situation. So if I go back over, it would appear... I mean, you've also got the copper cable here that's being produced, and that is being used for the old system I had. No, that is, sorry, that's, copper cable is being used for the um, advanced circuits. The, um, just the plain copper plates being requested is being used for everything else. So if we go through here, at the moment, 
this whole system here, that big system there, is absolutely crawling with robots, but it's not giving us enough copper. We don't have enough copper coming out, which means uh, we don't have enough copper ore going in. Not really much of an issue though, because if you look here, every single request chest is full. They're all completely full. So that's not really a problem either. Now I could expand this. I think what we need is we need more furnaces. Um, in order to make this work efficiently and make it work properly, we're going to need more furnaces. Because if you mouse over and look down, we've got 47,000 copper ore available in the system. Um, but we haven't, we're not processing it fast enough. So the first upgrade that we can do is we can um, change the speed modules on here. Uh, we can get them to level 3 speed modules. Right. Now, if I'm going to make those into level 3 speed modules, I'm going to need to make level 3 speed modules. Now, level 3 speed modules are not an easy thing to go and make. I don't need to worry about the iron at the moment, but let me go to my speed module process. This is my module processing unit. I don't have a great deal of them being made right here. This is running flat out. It is making them. It takes a long time. It takes 60 seconds to make that speed module, that one there. And I've got loads of speed modules on here, and that's speeding it up quite a way. So if you look in here, I've got 150 of these, or just under, but yeah, call it 150. That's not that's not a lot. That's that's not a great deal. I mean, we're, we're talking tens of thousands for most things here. And even these productivity modules are level threes, I don't have a great deal of them. So my kind of backlog bit here is I need more of these being made. So I'm going to need more processing units being made in order to fulfill all of the requests. It's not those. The requests come here. And these now are working flat out and they are full. So I need a new area to expand my whole processing unit um, production. Uh, not processing units, modules. I need a whole new area to expand the modules production. Um, I'm thinking I should put it close to these because then they haven't got very far to go. Although um the bulk of um the items that they use is actually these green ones and that's fairly close as well so we could put it here so we take a look if i zoom out it's a little bit easier it, you can get your eyes to adjust to it and i know the, the robots can be kind of it, it really does mess with your eyes a bit I'm, I'm well aware that it can really screw with your eyes big time and it's not all that pleasant to watch um Generally, though, it's not too bad. Now then, I don't want this here. This is an, a really old system here that I no longer need. I've got no need for this whatsoever. That one um, miner there, I don't... We get rid of that one as well. So what I will do is I take the deconstruction planner and I put it out across everything like that and it just lifts the whole lot. Boom. My robots will go and pick up a lot, and then some of the robots in the actual system, they will come and pick up the rest, and they will go and place them elsewhere so that we don't need to concern ourselves with them. And then this system here, I've got only 130-odd pieces of coal in that chest. That will soon be used up. If I do this, like that, that will pick up all of those um, miners and the bits of belt and everything else that is on there. The whole lot is now being collected up. I don't want to have all of that lot stuck in my bag. So I, I'm, I got no need for any of that. So what we're going to have to do, they're all being taken away. We don't need to worry about those. First of all, we're now going to have to restore power to anywhere that lost its power supply, which includes that one there. So if I drop a couple of poles up here, why is... Oh, it is connecting. No, it's not connecting. Why isn't it connecting? I don't know why that didn't connect there. That should have automatically connected to that one there. I don't know why that did that. Anyway, this game does occasionally do peculiar things, especially when you um, get a lot bigger. So we want a single miner, just a second. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to set these up here so that I gather up these last few resources that are lying on the map. I really hate leaving resources and building over them. These will mine everything that's under them. This one will mine the iron ore and the coal. Um, doesn't matter because the robots will come and collect whatever they need and then they just leave the rest. So we don't need to sort of worry about specifying what they need to pick up. You only need to worry about being specific about what you want your robots to collect and things when you're not just picking up, uh, when you're delivering it onto belts because then you've got to manually sort it out yourself. We don't need to worry about that because we're not delivering anything onto a belt. 
Um, and the robots are a lot cleverer. They will come and gather it all up. So I don't want to be carrying coal around so, and stone. I don't want that either. So I'm putting that into here. This is my log logistic trash slots. The robots will come and pick anything up that I put into those slots, take it away and put it into the long-term storage. I don't want all of those belts. I'll get rid of some of them. I will keep some belts for when we go to expanding things later on. Um, what else have I got? I got a pump there, which I don't think I need at the moment. So I will remove that, clear a bit of space. There's a steel furnace. I definitely don't want that on me because we're all about electric furnaces now. And that's about it. So there's my bags nicely cleared out. Now then, I should have some um, blueprints for this lot here. I would like to make a few more productivity modules. I've only got three of the level two and three of the level threes. And for the speed ones, I don't have very much at all. These here, these are efficiency ones. I find that I don't tend to use those. I'm of the opinion while I'm doing this particular version of my game that if I want to I'm not going to use efficiency modules I can just throw down more power stations and I don't need to worry about them so all I do need to concern myself with is the level one speed modules we use those um, not just up here those are being used elsewhere and if we come out here this is research production my research production area kind of here you can see um, the green ones they require inserters and belts and these here if you take a look it requires one battery three processing units one speed module and 30 copper cables the copper cables I'm not too concerned about with those um, I've got everything in the chest anyway this is all here ready and waiting but the speed modules we do use those speed modules up and the processing units as well so I need more level one speed modules being made so if we just come up here now it's a little bit messy down there i ultimately i will be sort of expanding this out and i'll go through and i refine what we're making um sort of make it more efficient and so on but at the moment we don't need to worry too much about that right what have we got we got blueprints for green circuits and red circuits i don't want those so if i go here and right click to open this one scroll down through now i think have I got those? Oh no, they're all in um, yellow. So what do we got? Stack inserter, beacon, grenade. You, I, I do name each and every one of these, but you still got to go through and look for each one to get the right one. Um, gear wheels, copper cables, green circuit, big, uh, blue science. No, nope, don't want that. I did have some on blues, which, hang on, was that it? Oh, yeah, I did uh, a whole load of level ones all together. When I moved the whole lot, I made just a quick blueprint to um, slap the whole lot down in one go. But I'm not... Th I don't want to use those. I've got a feeling that we've only got blue circuits, uh, blue factories ready for this. And green science assemblers too. I think it's up here. Blueprint. I didn't even name those. Efficiency... Oh, maybe I, re maybe I redid them, because I don't want efficiency, do I? Robot frame, rail, and that's just another blueprint. It looks like... Oh, that's the, that's the speed module, right there. And that's efficiency, which I did name. And that is the, um, the other one. So what I want to do... I'm actually going to have to upgrade these. So if I take that one and I'll drop it in there, and I'll take that one and I'll drop it in there as well. Um, I'm not worried about the efficiency ones. We're not planning to use those. So if I take this one here, the speed module, and I zoom in a little bit, and we'll just... Where should we put this one? If I come down a little bit so that we can line it up, and line it up there so we can run in a straight line, that's it there. So if I take that one and I drop it over the top, it will automatically superimpose so that we make it like that. That's ideal. So I'm going to want to do that a couple more times. I want that out a little bit bigger. Now, I don't actually want it with the blue one. So if you look here, it just says quite clearly, shift, right mouse button to clear. So if I go shift, right mouse button, I've cleared that. That's now a blank blueprint. And if I take that, mouse over all of those. The music and everything in the background is a little bit too quiet, I think. I will for the next episode. I'll make it slightly louder than it is now. So there we go. That is that's everything that we need. I've um, I mean, Let me show you before I before I do that. Let me uh, get rid of that. Now, if I zoom in a little bit, what I do, I don't like to have chests full of everything. Um, sometimes that doesn't work out very well. So you go onto the fast inserter, 
and you, it'll look like that. It'll look like logistics connection. I'll tell you what, I will get rid of that one completely and I will put a new one down so you can see what I do. That one will drop onto there. The requested chest, we've already made, um, I've already requested 20 advanced circuits, 20 electronic circuits, and the robots have already been along and they've put those into the chest like we wanted. So then I go onto the inserter, which goes from there and it takes the item and places it into this factory. And I go onto here and up here, you've got circuit network and you've got logistic network. Circuit network is when you, um, it's kind of an advanced thing where you can use wires and you can just have signals running between a couple of different items. We don't need to worry about that today. We want to go to logistics network and we click on there, connect it to the logistics network. Still nothing's happening yet. What I want to do is I want to disable, I want this one to stop working when I reach a certain number of level one speed modules. So first of all, if I go into this bottom box here, enabled condition, click on here and I go where the speed modules are, which is on this one, on the second one. And I go speed module one, because that's what we're making. That's what we're making in there. Speed module one, enabled condition. Now I always go to that one, which is when it, the number is less than or equal to and then I select a number on here and I normally for these speed modules I don't want loads I don't want loads spare it's, it takes a lot to make a speed module um, so I don't want it putting in hundreds and hundreds of them I don't need hundreds and hundreds of them so we'll set it at 500 so click set so now that one will work if the total number of speed modules in the logistics network is less than or equal to 500 so it's right there and if you if you don't know which way is on these if you don't know you're less than and you're greater than look at the way the arrow is pointing it's as simple as that um if it's got a line underneath it's less than or equal to and if it's just the arrow it's then uh less than or greater than so this one would mean that the bigger one is at the bigger end and the less is at the, the less end. So that would be greater than. That wouldn't work. It would only make it. It would only allow that machine to work if we had more than 500. That's not how we want this one to work. So I'm going to go with that one. So there you look at the, the arrow, that little tiny arrow right there. The small end of the arrow is down there. So if that is less than the big end of the arrow, which is that side, 500, so less than or equal to, because of the line underneath, 500, then it will work. And what that means, essentially, is when you look here, that shows what's in the logistic system storage. You can't see the small numbers um, further down, but you can just see right at the bottom, there's just like half an image of a speed module. Basically, when we get 500 or more speed modules in the entire network so in all of the chests added up together when there's 500 or more of those speed modules in there then that one will stop working when that total number gets less than 500 so when um some of them are used up in various different things and the total number because say goes to 498 then that one will start working again and it will keep working until the number gets back above or equal to five uh, actually it goes back above 500 because it's equal to it will see still keep working but anyway that is basically how we do that so let me just get the blueprint again that's all set up everything that i've set up in there so the the bit that i've set up in there the requests that i've put into that chest everything that i've set up inside the um the factory in order to choose what i want to make is all saved and if i click on blueprint up here i click on edit label now we want to call this speed uh, let's just go speed module one speed module level one and you must press enter if you don't press enter when you're typing it uh, after you've typed in your um, your title it won't save it it will just go to the default blueprint so we've got that and I create blueprint there we go so I now have a blueprint and if I just get rid of it it's now in my bags and I can mouse over the speed module one. That's the one that we want. So now if I come out here and I put speed module one, it'll tell you where it can go because if it's in red, it can't be dropped down. So we put one there and we put one there. Now my robots, they, they will jump out and they will do this quite cheerfully. So I want several speed module ones in order to keep up with demand. Speed module one is something that I'm using a lot of at the moment. So if we do another, just do eight. I've been doing things in fours. Everywhere has been in fours. So if I do eight of those, 
if you have a look up here, you can see these chests are already, um, the requests are in there. Um, these are requested chests. It's one of the most crucial items. Logistic request, 20 of those and 20 of those. The robots are starting to bring them in and fill the chests. The requested chest is one of the most important items that you will need to research in order to be able to make this whole beltless factory work. So I've just got time to do one more. So we're going to go do exactly the same as we did down here. I'm just going to move that up just a fraction like that. And this one, I'm going to upgrade it there. Now, everything else is already in place for that, so we don't need to worry about it. So if I shift, right click and clean that one out and I do that like that. I can then go onto here and I can go productivity. Um, I'll just do productivity one because I know what I know that it's a module. So ooh, press enter and then create blueprint. And I will also make eight of these all the way along so that we've got plenty of these coming in um, as I'm going to be using a lot of them. Now, all of my blueprints at the moment, if I can in the factories, I use productivity modules. Now, if you look here, you see but I've got productivity level one on all of them. So I really, I need to upgrade everything to level to productivity level three. Plus I want speed beacons everywhere. Um, it's, it's generally, my long-term plans for this are pretty substantial. I've got some pretty impressively big long-term plans to make all of this work. Now I'm just going to, actually no I'm not, I'm going to use, where are they? There, the electric substation. If I drop a substation there and a substation there, they will all start working now perfectly. Every single one of them is working. It's um, dropping into these. That will start filling those up. I could put speed modules in these and speed it up just a bit, which I might well do in the future. So when we come back next time, I will do the next stage of this, which is we need... In order to make productivity level 2, let me just show you on here. It's a lot easier if I show you rather than in the factory. Um, productivity 1, you need 5 advanced circuit, 5 electronic circuit. Then level 2, you need 4 of the level 1s, plus another 5 advanced circuits, and then 5 processing units. And then the level 3, the productivity 3 modules, those are the really good ones. Right? That's the ones that you really want to go for. You need 5 level 2s to make those, and each of those requires 4 of those. So one of those requires 20 of these um, so you see it does and then you need more processing units and advanced circuits so you require a huge amount of resources to make one productivity module level three it's, it's a big investment of time and resources and energy and everything else to make a processing unit that's not an easy thing to do you've got to bring in sulfuric acid which we've got plus a load of advanced circuits and electronic circuits these things are hungry for the electronic circuits you need 20 of them to be able to make a processing unit, um, which is why we just don't have any green, you know, the electronic circuits. We don't have any of those in storage at the moment, and we need to up our production, which means we need to up our copper production, um, which is why I go back to uh, speed modules, because I want more speed modules in order to try and boost my copper production. So you see, it, everything is kind of in uh, in these great big circles of production. You've got to, you find one area that needs improvement. Um, yep, okay, ideal, so we'll improve that. And oh, hang on, that means that we've got to improve this. Oh, hang on a minute, before we can do that, we've got to go back to this. Oh, before we do that, and you see where we're going? Do you see how this works out? It just keeps going and going and going and going. So... It's a slow process, but I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. I don't know if I will have time to play this game on my own before I come back to doing this a bit more. You can see those lovely robots, those construction robots there, throwing out um, loads and loads of these, which is quite good, actually, because I, I forgot that I've got my um, concrete production right close to this. That's fantastic. But yeah, next time, so we'll probably just carry on with upgrading our uh, level 3 productivity and speed module section. We'll, just, we'll add like another, we'll drop another bit down over here. And then we got to improve our copper and I really, I need to expand the base a bit. Um, we're stripping out all the copper over here. I'm stripping out copper here and I've got three, two lots of copper I'm stripping here. Um, we'll probably end up just putting more um, furnaces down here in order to improve the whole copper production system. 
and beyond that i'm not really sure it's all of it is going to take a while um i'm not quite sure how we're going to go about doing some of these things you kind of this looks insanely complicated but it all starts off really really simple everything is in the game is on its own it's really quite basic it's very simple it's easy to understand it's and then you just like you add in another bit and then you add in another bit and then you add in another bit and so on and so forth and eventually you get to the point where you're looking at it and you're like how did i make this how what how is this even operating i don't i genuinely you know you, you look at it and you're like genuinely confused because you can't see how everything is working properly i got like plastic production and sulfuric acid production and more plastic production up there and I'm, I'm not even sure how i went about building it now it's it's kind of all gotten into a big confusing confuddle but anyway that is all i've got time for so until next time thank you very much for watching this is frithgar goodbye and see you later